Hello everybody, I've been, been trying to master this carving foot ring out. Uh, lost a few pots in the process. What I've discovered you need to do is, or what I do is, um, turn it a little bit softer. Turn it when the clay is a little bit softer than you normally would. And uh, they don't crack and warp and whatever like I've been having trouble with. Okay, this is the first bit. I'll just turn the inside the foot ring. Now I know traditionally all of the bottom of the foot ring is carved, but. I really like this centerpiece here, so I'm just preparing a few here, ready for the carving process. Okay, just a simple start-off point for my pots, anyway. Um, I like the combination of the I like the combination of the sort of the quite freely turned centre of my foot rings. outer area that I'll show you in a minute. I'm just I've also found it easier to if I do this part first what I used to do was turn it to this point and then carve it. But I tended to rush it a little bit. Now I just prepare it a little first. That chamfer part there is important, I'll show you why later on, but that's, the, that's my marking point at which to carve from to give me an, e an equal size footprint at the bottom. in my top centre and still can't quite get it right. <laughs> this one won't tap centre because it's a bit wobbly. Enjoying a beautiful British summer. It's not stopped raining here for about three days now. Flood warnings everywhere. No mention of a hose pipe bam at the moment though, so it must be bad. Okay, that's a, another one prepared. We'll um, cut to the next bit in a minute. 
Okay, we're going to go with the, uh, the carving of these tea balls. This is what I'm aiming for. That's my model. This is quite soft, you can see. It's not quite soft, so we have to be a bit more careful than normal. I need a hand inside because then you can gauge the thickness because they go from quite thick here to quite thin. This is the tool I use for carving it. It's just a piece of scrap wood. I don't know what it, what it is actually, mahogany I think. And I've chamfered it on two edges to give it a nice sharp edge. Well, fairly sharp. And uh, we just carve into it in a curve. Try and do it in one movement if I can, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I hope you can see this. I'm doing it the right way. Managed to get a screen from my camera to send all the way from America for it. It's amazing now. Uh, no one in this country sells them. Okay, so that's the, the top part of it carved. You can see it with the, with the shadows there. Sometimes I might go back over, this one's not too bad, I might go back over it and just deepen that bit there. Just to give a nice shadow. And then, earlier when I was telling you about the chamfered edge, what I use that for is, I start to carve it from there. And continue this one to make it look as if it's just one continual streak. I've tried doing it in one continual cut but I tend to cut the corner out to make a hole so I have to fudge it a little bit. And inside again. Okay, I'll go around that way. a nice area where I want to put my stamp first. So put the stamp in there. And then just nick out these bits that I've missed. Fairly free. And that's it there. And as you can see because I've marked it with a chamfer I get quite a nice, fairly even um, foot ring. I hate it when they get thin and thick. So there's that one there, almost done. Don't bother taking any of this um, bits that are sticking out. As it dries, they just rub off. Otherwise, now you just fudge the edges. But I like to keep that nice and sharp. So I'll just do another one. It's a nice one. What I do, just to make an, just to make a point, is when I throw it, I throw it in quite deep um, throwing lines in. That's quite a nice one. Uh, this one here, I haven't got such very good throwing lines in, so I don't think the carving will be that good on that. But this one here should be okay because when you cut it, it gives you more of a, a profile. Now you watch me mess this one up. See, messed it up. Oh. <laughs> Sod's law. Try again. It's only clay. Back in the bottle. Back in the bucket. Let's go some talking and doing this at the same time so I'll shut up.
These are going to be for sale at Potfest. If anybody's come in. <laughs> Quite satisfied about gouging big chunks of clay out of the bottom of this. I'm leaving that one there because that's got my stamp in it. Looking up these cuts now. See soon. Just a quick um, addition to the end of this video is by you doing it in a, with a softer clay, um, I tend to push these out of shape with your hand inside. So I just use a uh, an old just an old bowl and I don't press on too hard. But I just rotate the the, uh, the bowl inside there. You press too hard, you're going to split it, but just ease it. Like that brings it back to being round. Sometimes I'm not bothered about wobbly pots, but with this one, with a sort of flame type cut, it needs a circular top. Okay, that's it done. <laughs> Finish now.